Nigerian uh, national rate of FGM is currently placed at over 20 uh, million, you know, affecting young women and girls. Yeah. And, you know, Ni Nigeria has uh, 36 states, including the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. So this uh, FGM cut across these states. But uh, the percentage in terms of regions, we have we have six political uh, geo, six geopolitical zones, and uh, this FGM is actually prevalent in the south south region where it has seventy seven percent. Yeah. While in the south it it has sixty eight percent. In the southwest it has sixty five percent. Uh, in the northeast, it ha has 24%. In the northwest, it has 54%. In the north central, it has 52%. So these are the ranges across the geopolitical zones. Uh, in Nigeria, there used to be uh, no laws regarding the curtailing and then, you know, trying to stop uh, the prevalent nature of FGM. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a constitution which particularly specified the fundamental human right, of which you and I know that FGM is one of the violations of, you know, those human rights of women and, and girls. So that is the only constitution that used to be, or the law that used to be in place. But the constitution has not particularly specified and categorized FGM. Yeah. But back then in 2015, the country had a law called Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition Act, VAP 215. That law now clearly specifies the rule of FGM when it comes to prevention and also has some penalties captured in the law. So as we speak, out of the 36 states that we have, yeah. almost 30 states have domesticated this law. It will shock you to know that one of the states within the week, called this state to be precise, has formally and officially signed this VAP into law. That is to tell you that in that state, the law has come to stay. And anyone who is found, you know, committing this particular act will be dealt according to the law that is encapsulated. And then the challenges that the country specifically is having in terms of this advocacy, uh, the kind of patriarchal system and the complete acceptability because of culture. You know, one of the reasons that, you know, FGM seems to have been very prevalent is the culture. Some people used to think it is a way of, you know, uh, preparing young girls for marriage, saving their virginity and their lives. So the advocacy, we are now taking them to the grassroots, having them enlightened to know of the implications and the effects of this. And that is what we have already kick-started and that we are doing.